Jim? Jim! What's up, dude? Must you change your digi attire in a public area? Absolutely. New era, new look. You never know who might recognize your manly mug. Besides, everyone here is either sleeping or distracting themselves with Angry Birds on their iPhones. Jim, it's 2003. Angry Birds and iPhones wouldn't exist until 2007. How much historic research did you do before joining my squad, anyway? Look, I never got into that whole BC-80 stuff. The way I see it, history is divided into BHC and ARSS 9000, before Hover Cars and after rebooted Simpsons Season 9000. May Mac and Mac Roaning Mark 5 rest in peace. Okay. If you really must use those names, find another milestone for the second era. Why? What's wrong with... Oh, I should probably rename it. Leon, if I can have a moment. What's up, Ares in an orb? Well, Officer Leon, I was wondering what... Look, I don't know how we got back into reality. What matters is I know the Warper's plan, so stop quizzing me and help us stop her, darn it! Did you change your outfit again? Yes. Actually, Leon, I gave up on getting that information after the eighth time I asked, which we will resolve later. <clears throat> I was simply going to ask, what actually is the Warper's plan? Oh. I guess a plane ride from Ireland to America would be a good time for some exposition. <laughs> Let's get right to it then. Start simulation, subjects 06 and 14. Simply put, the Warper believes that her superiors are not taking advantage of the possibilities time traveling brings to the table. That's absurd. If we were to alter anything more than what we have, time itself could collapse. Well, yes. As members of the FBTTT, we all know this fact. It's what we fight to stop every day, but as a relatively low-ranked member of the FBI, our exclusive warper isn't entirely in the know about the current rules of temporal alteration. Or maybe she simply doesn't care. Either way, she believes that the withholding of the existence of time travel from the masses is an injustice that must be rectified. You mean to say... She's made contact with someone who shares her viewpoints. The son of 2003 San Francisco's 10th most powerful business tycoon, the CEO of Jameson Jackets. I swear, that name gets stupider each time you say it. Can't say I disagree, Jim. However, in just two days' time, they will auction off her real temporal shifter to the highest bidder, putting the power of time in the people's hands. Hands that have no idea the danger misusing this power will bring. End simulation. Oh, sweet! Even after being flung out of space and time, I still got some snacks left. They said there are no use for pants like pockets. Passengers will be landing in New York in just a moment. Please assure your chairs that they're upright position and make sure your seatbelts are fastened before we touch down. All right, this is it. Remember, when we touch down, we need to get to San Francisco as quickly as possible. Are you ready to save the world, officers? Yeah! All right, this is not as exciting as I thought it would be. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs>